family and friends here today. I, I printed a hundred thinking we'd have extras to give away, and uh, this is a nice surprise. Tell you what, if you do not have a bulletin near enough that you can see it, raise your hand, and we're going to have to do a little bulletin sharing. One guy way in the back of the church, everybody else can kind of see somebody up in the bullet balcony help that guy out back there. Anybody else not being able to see a bulletin at this point? Most of it I'll try to call out to you as we go through the day. Huh? No. Um, good. The other thing, we are having Holy Communion today. Uh, did you get a communion cup on your way in? If you do not, raise your hand and Todd will bring a little basket around. Everybody has communion? I don't see any hands up. All right. Uh, these are our uh, COVID communion kits, I guess is what you'll call them. Uh, on the bottom is the, uh, the bread. You can just tear off the thing there. So we'll, when we get to communion time, the bread's on the bottom. This is grape juice here on the top. And so we, we've been having communion in our seats and, and we'll do that again today. So I think those are all the housekeeping details. Welcome. It's Pentecost Sunday in the church, and this is the day where uh, Jesus promised his disciples, I'll send you the Holy Spirit, which is going to guide you and lead you and protect you until the day that I return to make all things new. And so today we'll be celebrating the, the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. We always confirm on uh, Pentecost Sunday in the church um, a reminder that, the, that that work continues to go on. It's passed down through the generations. So thank you for being here today. You'll notice on the back of the bulletin that our summer worship schedule begins two weeks from today, June the 6th. We will be uh, starting to worship 8.30 a.m. Uh, throughout the rest of the summer. And there's not much more on the bulletin you need to know about at this point. Wasn't there Brad Paisley had an album called Time Well Wasted? Before we begin worship, I want to waste some good time uh, and recognize our Sunday school teachers for the year uh, today was our last day of Sunday school, and I was going to call them down, but I think half of them are in the balcony. Uh, but if you want to stand up at least where you are, I do want to recognize you this morning. As you well know, it's been a strange year. Uh, a lot of our uh, teaching for... Okay, well, let's do this first. We have Laura Beckman, Todd Jakes, uh, Stacy Bethke is up there in the balcony. Uh, at another confirmation somewhere else today is Amanda Bethke, our coordinator. And there have been other substitutes that have come in and out, and we appreciate that. But um, the other day I said, can you be in, uh, in worship at the beginning so we can recognize you? And, and here was the trend of our discussion that we had, is they genuinely felt blessed to be able to be Sunday school teachers, and I was just glad we survived the year. Uh, but they came out of it feeling good and encouraged and that they learned more than their kids, and that's, I learned more than you guys in confirmation, so I know that. But anyway, I wanted to take a second this morning and, and recognize our Sunday school staff for a great year, and Melissa Williams, their musician as well. Let's thank them. All right. If you've got your blue hymnals in front of you, let's get underway with our worship today. Number 698, as this is the affirmation of Baptism Sunday, we were baptized in Christ Jesus. If you're able, please rise so we enter into worship. Jesus, we were baptized in His death. Let us rest until we 
gathered, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit of God, we are gathered for worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, let us come humbly before God and our brothers and sisters in the faith, confessing our sins, known and unknown, trusting in God's gracious word of forgiveness. Holy God, who brings life out of death and transforms the whole creation with a word, forgive our disobedience and breathe on us the spirit of your righteousness. Free us from the power of sin, death, and the devil in our lives. Renew us with your loving spirit as you bring us from death to sin to life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Make us your instruments of peace and love in the world and free us from all that seeks to enslave us, trusting that your will for us is that we would be free to live fully into your mercy and grace. Amen. It is by the command and the authority of Christ that I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who grants us life eternal, the glory of the Father who created us in love, and the power of the Holy Spirit who forgives and renews our life be with you all. Thank you. Together we pray. God of life, on this day you poured forth upon your church your spirit through whom we are one body, the body of Christ. Unite us at your table that we may be poured forth into the world, bearing witness to your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson today is a familiar lesson from the uh, book of Ezekiel. If you don't know anything about the book of Ezekiel, you probably know this story, Dem Dry Bones. Uh, people of Israel at this point, they've been disobedient to God. They've violated the covenant. This is about uh, you know, six, seven hundred years or so before Jesus' time. and They've been uh, sent into exile. They've lost the promised land. God has imposed judgment upon them. And as you'll hear in the end of the reading, the people are wondering if they have a future with their God. And so Ezekiel chapter 37, this is a vision that God gives to the prophet Ezekiel. When a prophet gets a vision, they are to share it then with the people. Ezekiel says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He led me around among them, And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain so that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet in an exceedingly great army. And then he said to me, son of man, These bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God. 
Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and I raise you from your graves, O my people. I'll put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. There ends our first reading. Our psalm today, Psalm number 139, verses 1 through 16, speaking of uh, a God who speaks life into things. One of the things we confess as Christians is that we are not happy random accidents of a, an outer control universe that got lucky one day and a molecule turned into a slime, into a monkey, and now here we are. Uh, the scriptures tell a much different story of a God who creates, of a God who puts breath in people, who fearfully and wonderfully makes his people one by one. We confess that today as we read Psalm 139. Together we read. Lord, you have searched me out and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you created me in my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, as yet when there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. Our second reading for today is the story of Pentecost. It's from Acts chapter 2. This is uh, the 50th day after Jesus was bodily raised from the dead. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples were all gathered in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every under, under every nation and under heaven. And at the sound, that multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? How is it then we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Others were mocking, though, and said, they're filled with new wine. But St. Peter stood up with the eleven and lifted his voice up and addressed them, saying, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There ends our second lesson. If you're able, please rise for this morning's gospel. Holy Gospel for Pentecost Sunday is from John chapters 15 and 16. This is Jesus as he and his disciples are gathered around the table. It's the Last Supper, and uh, Jesus is addressing his disciples. They're grieving and they're upset at this point because they, Jesus has been telling them, tomorrow um, I go away, tomorrow I will be killed. Uh, and then, interesting, Jesus says, and quite frankly, it's for your benefit. Jesus said, when the Helper, the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. You will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you to the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all of the truth, for he will speak not on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, Jesus said, for he will take what is mine, and he will declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I have said that he takes what is mine and declares it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. First time sweating this year, yes? Confirmation day can be one of two. It's either cold and we're all rubbing our hands together or it's warm like this. Well, last week was Ascension Day in the church, the 40th day after Jesus was bodily raised from the dead. Uh, Let it be said, maybe that's an important thing to say this morning, Uh, we believe that Jesus' body, which was in the grave for three days, actually rose. There was a true resurrection. It wasn't some kind of a metaphor or butterfly imagery about how our lives change. No, the Bible declares and we believe that Jesus bodily rose from the dead after three days, the first of many who are to come. And then it says Jesus spent 40 days with his disciples before he ascended into heaven. And what did he do? He took those disciples who had been with him for those previous three years, and he had Bible study with them. At that point, it was only the, what we would call the Old Testament, but Jesus starting at the very beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And throughout Moses, throughout the story of the flood, throughout the law and the prophets, Jesus shows how he is the fulfillment of all of these prophecies and promises of the Old Testament. He gets his disciples ready to carry on the work. And that's why Jesus says it's good that I go away because you're going to be able to do this work. And quite frankly, Jesus is right because you're sweating in this church this morning, right? The plan worked. Whether or not you thought these 12 disciples ever had a chance, you look around you this morning as you stick to people next to you saying, I guess he was right. The gospel continues to do its work. And Jesus says, that's why it's good that I go away. He equips his disciples. They become the apostles. They become the ones who write down the words of the New Testament, these eyewitnesses accounts of uh, people like Matthew, Mark, John, uh, the apostle Paul. All of these gentlemen, they write down the gospels. They write letters. They plant churches. They pass the faith on as we're doing here today. 
Those 40 days before the, res- the ascension of Jesus into heaven were important days for those disciples, but they weren't quite ready yet. There was one final thing they needed. They couldn't do this job on their own. It wasn't just having some book smarts, right? Uh, okay, you've read through it. Now you know everything. No. Jesus says, the one thing you still lack is God the Holy Spirit. He will fill you not long from now. And so at the beginning of Acts or at the end of any of the gospel, he says, you wait here in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father has come to you. Ten days later, the 50th day, Pentecost means 50 days, ten days after Jesus ascends into heaven, you heard the reading today from Acts chapter 2. You see, God the Holy Spirit could be everywhere. He can be inside people in a way that Jesus, the living Son of God, could not. And so he says, I will go away, but it's better for you. I will give you this Holy Spirit. He will come to live inside of you, and he will continue the work of Jesus. A bunch of Holy Spirit-filled Christians filling the room today. He continues to do that as he has done with generations before us. And so on that day, the Holy Spirit fills them, and they start to speak foreign languages. Some people think, well, speaking in tongues is a kind of a, a babbling language, and I I don't know much about that. Maybe you've experienced that. I have not. The original Pentecost, however, was a bunch of Galilean men speaking foreign languages. Do you guys have to take foreign language at school? Spanish? German? Just Spanish? Nothing else? How many of you are not sure if you're in a language class at this point? (laughs) You're kind of looking at me. It's too hot. You know, I've tried this before. Don't study for your Spanish test. Just call on the Holy Spirit, right? And he'll fill you up, and then you'll speak, and your teacher will be so impressed because you now know how to speak. No, that's not the way it works. But on that Pentecost day, God did that for a very specific reason. Because in Jerusalem at that time, there was people from all over the world, and even though Jesus was Jewish and he was the Messiah of the Jewish people, didn't God tell Abraham a long time ago, Abraham, through you, All of the nations of the earth will be blessed. Not just the Israelites, but all people. Here becomes the fulfillment of that. On that day, these disciples, they start speaking all these different languages, and you heard them listed there in the book of Acts. Two reasons. Number one, so these people could know Jesus. This has always been God's intention all along, is that ever since the Garden of Eden, when the original sin and the rebellion and the brokenness happened, God has been in the practice Uh, of putting the world back together with the ultimate goal that one day he will make all things new. And he wants all nations to know this. And so the disciples speak in their language so that they can become Christians. It said, in their native language, they heard the mighty works of God. That means probably a whole lot of things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 139, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, the story of God who at Christmas time became incarnate from a virgin and was born and lived and died. And, and in the meantime, he healed people, cast out demons, that he died. And that three days later, he rose from the dead. The very first of, he says, many who are to come. There's a brand new creation coming. We talked about this in the cemetery, I think, yesterday out here. Isn't that a great hope to gather under? You stand in a cemetery and you say, one day Jesus is going to bring life back into these bodies while I've resurrected imperishable and immortal bodies. That's why these guys are babbling in foreign languages. God wants people to know the hope that he has given them because Jesus died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of his Father. We talked about the Lord's Prayer all year, didn't we, fellas? If Jesus says you should pray these things, that's because he expects that God will answer them. Jesus at the right hand of his Father, hearing our prayers. But It is all geared towards the end where he comes back and he makes all things new. No more death, tears, crying, and pain. You can open to the last two pages of the Bible, especially Revelation 21 and 22, and you get a vision of what God is up to. And he wants the nations, he wants anyone with ears to be able to hear this. And so these people hear the mighty works of God in their language, and then they go home and they start telling their friends, How is Jerusalem? Well, it's great. Let me tell you what I heard when I was in Jerusalem. And pretty soon, they made it to places like Germany, Norwegians in the room, just me, two of us. All right, three of us. Okay, a couple of Norwegians. Good. There's there's probably more of us. We're just embarrassed because we know we're in the German church. (laughs) Swedes, uh, maybe people from uh, Poland, Holland, 
see some of that. Yeah, oh, one person from Holland. We didn't know you were here. Yes. Of course, uh, your grandma, right? Uh, all of these places, eventually the gospel makes it there. And throughout the generations, the story gets handed down. We baptize our children into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you're standing there, the pastor says, will you make sure these kids get confirmation someday? And guess what? Today's a fulfillment not only of you guys being able to endure me talking for 75 hours, three years, 25, three years, 25 meetings a time. Uh, it's going much deeper than that. This is the promises that your parents promised that you would be raised in. Today you take those to be your own. This is the work of Pentecost. It's the work of the Holy Spirit so that we would all know what God is up to. So this morning, my friends, young men, you guys are baptized Christians. I remind you of that. This gift has been passed down to you through generations, all the way from the apostles. A lot of you have generations above you who are here today. We're glad for that. And they wanted nothing more than for you to know the hope that you have in Jesus. That's why they made you listen to me every Wednesday night for a while. My greatest pleasure, it's my favorite thing to do in the church, frankly, is to have confirmation class. You are baptized Christians. The gift has been given to you. The day you were baptized, Jesus promised you your sins are forgiven. Jesus promises that each and every day of your life, he walks alongside of you as the good shepherd. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil because your God is with you. And on the day where your body gives out, we were out for Wayne Eckhart's burial yesterday. Well, that's when Jesus does his greatest work. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. I've come and I've taken you to be where I am so that where I am, you can be also. So we proclaim those promises. And we stand in the graveyard and you say, and Jesus isn't done yet. One day he will come back and he will make all things new. No more death, tears, crying, pain. You've got all of these things that's already been given to you by Jesus on the day that you were baptized. And so today as you stand in front of us, you are saying uh, to the rest of the church here, gathered, invisible above, you're saying, yes, I believe that those promises have been given to me. And so we look forward to listening to you affirm your faith here in a minute. Parents, I thank you this morning. You stood in front of the church on that day and you promised that your kids would know the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments. You would place in their hands the scriptures. You would provide for their instruction in the Christian faith so that they could grow up in this covenant of baptism so that they would know the hope that they have. So parents, thank you. You've done it. You've done what you promised to do. Your work's not done. I tell the famous story the week after I was confirmed 38 years ago. I can believe that already. Uh, it was 38 years ago minus one week because my parents said, time for church. And I said, I got confirmed last Sunday. He said, yes, it was great. Get in the car. And here I am. Your work's not done. But on this day, uh, your sons um, take over that promise as their own, but you're still going to have to be a bit of a cheerleader. But they will one day thank you for this gift that you have passed on to them. It might not be today, but they will one day know that the greatest legacy, the greatest thing you would ever leave them has nothing to do with houses or land or anything like that. Uh, one day they will realize this gift of salvation is the greatest gift that they have and they will thank you for that. So since they might not do it today, I'll thank you for it. And to the rest of us, this morning, baptized, Holy Spirit-filled believers in Christ, Jesus wanted you to know him as well and to know the hope that he has called you to. He wants you to know your sins are forgiven as well as you trust in him and that he has spoken over your life and your death and your eternity. Thanks be to God. If you've got your group blue books in front of you, before we have confirmation, let's sing number 684, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Please rise if you're able.
can be seated. Yep. The following persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and today they desire to make public affirmation of their baptisms. So as I read their names, I ask them to come forward and face the congregation. They said, are we going to do this in order of height? Nice try, Dakota, but no, we're going to go alphabetically today. Levin Tice Kitzer, Right up here on the top step, Levin. Payden James Loverink, Dakota Matthew Malakowski, yep. Devin Paul Morkrid, Clay Thomas Routh. I think if you stacked them up, this would be the tallest confirmation class our church has ever had. <laughs> well, you add to the total, you count. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't forget about that. Us short guys always say that. So. We continue, anyway. In, our, in the first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul wrote, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to each of you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, my brothers in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus received you, and he made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word his loving purpose for you and for all of his creation. You've been nourished at his holy table, and you have been called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. So, confirmands, I ask you, do you renounce all of the forces of evil, the devil, and all of his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God? Born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Keep reading. He was crucified, died, and was buried. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? This time, let us pray for these gentlemen who are affirming their baptisms today, but for all the baptized everywhere. They, they and we would be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the ways of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be kept in the faith and communion. 
Send to your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray this morning, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers, you have made a public profession of your Christian faith, and so on behalf of this congregation, I now ask you, will you regularly gather among God's people in worship to receive God's word and to share in his holy supper? Will you be a witness to the faith that God has given you and to strive to remain steadfast in God's word? Will you be a servant to others and seek to love your neighbors following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus? And will you proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and his lordship in your life through your daily words and deeds? And so this part we will do individually. So Levin, do you promise to do these things? I will, and I ask God to help me. Payton, do you promise to do these things? I will, and I ask God to help me. Get you. Dakota, do you promise to do these things? I will. Devin, do you promise to do these things? I will, and I will ask God to do you promise to do these things? I will, and I will Then let us pray. Gracious Lord, it was through water and the Holy Spirit that you've made these young men your own. You've forgiven them their sins, and you have brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit, daily increase in them the gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, and a spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Levin, you stay here. The rest of you guys can go sit down real quick. Uh, for the laying on of hands for each of the uh, individuals, if you have come, uh, parent, grandparent, godparent, whoever, you just want to come up and lay hands on somebody, you could do that too. And so we'll invite Levin's family to come forward, and as you see, the Kitzers model that then. Uh, we'll go down the line here. Uh, Payton's family will be next. So, Levin, if you'd like to kneel here, your family will surround you and place a hand on your shoulder, your arm. Wrong hand. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, we pray that you would stir up and leaven Tice the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. You guys can be seated. Go ahead, Levin. Uh, Payton's family. Go ahead, Neil. Yep. You brought several with you today, didn't you? The more the merrier, we say. Put a hand on him if you would. If you can't reach him, put a hand. Let make sure mom and dad can get a hand on him, especially. Yeah. They've kind of earned this right, hey. Let us pray, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in paid in James the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Dakota's family. All the way up on the step there. Yeah. The short guys need the top step. Yeah. All right. Get a hand on him there, Dylan. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, we pray that you would stir up in Dakota Matthew the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, Empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Devin's family. Yep, top step.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Devon Paul the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Last but not least, Clay, come on up. Snacks. Uh, top step there. Huh? I was almost there. Almost there. I don't have no family. Yeah, uh, just a couple. If you're in the back there, just put your hand on somebody else's shoulder. I guess that'll work. I pray for Dennis there. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Clay Thomas the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, bring him to everlasting life. Amen. All right. In Jesus' name, amen. Clay, you stay up here with me and the rest of your family can head back. It's time for Clay's individual examination now. No, you're not. I'm going to have the rest of them come back up. You guys don't have to be in alphabetical order anymore, but up on the top step again. Let's take a second and congratulate the St. Peter Lutheran of uh, New Richland, Minnesota Confirmation Class of 2021. We are still not extending the peace with handshakes, but we will extend the peace to one another with uh, verbal greetings and waves and all that sort of stuff. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace. Peace to you guys. You guys can head back to your seats and we'll finish the service here. Peace to you guys. Thanks for coming today. We, uh, of course, aren't passing the offering plate either. Some things it's just going to take us a while to get back in the habit of it. Uh, but throughout the uh, pandemic, we have been the, using the offering prayer as a way of thanking God each and every day for the ways that he cares for us during the week. And so together, if you have a bulletin in front of you, let us pray. Holy and eternal God, you have fed, nourished, and forgiven us at your holy table. Send us now into the world to share the good news of your salvation with all that we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you have your communion with you, we'll move to that time of the service. You know those words well. That same night that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to his disciples, I think he also had in mind the fact that they were going to be uh, gathering together as a Holy Spirit-filled community and that uh, his true presence in body and blood uh, would be the thing that nourished and strengthened them. And so we do that today as well. You know those words that on that final night, Jesus broke bread and he said, take and eat, this is my body. It's broken for you, so do this in remembrance of me. He also took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take and drink, this is the new covenant. It is my blood and it is shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, remember us always in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which was broken for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ which was shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen each one of you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I think we're going to skip the communion prayer because I think that's the same thing as the offering prayer just a moment ago. Don't know how that happened. But uh, as we go on our way today, receive the benediction. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Closing hymn in your blue hymnals, number 781. Stand as we sing, my life flows on in endless song.
You want to take pictures, and so I might have the confirmand stay up here. Uh, and the rest of the congregation, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.